Welcome to our very first Calvary Kids Live. We're so excited for you to be here with us. I hope that everybody is safe and healthy, and we've definitely missed you so much. We're so excited that we can be here with you, and um, we are going to get started. We have a fun video to share with you, so we're going to get started with a special video from Danny Goki. Listen up, kids, one, two, three. It's as easy as ABC. I don't want you feeling bad. Cause feeling sick can make you sad. You do it. This is really ain't pretend. You love your family and your friends. We should help each other out. Do these steps and dance it out. Wild, wild, wash your hands. When you got a cough, cough, turn your head. Yeah, you gotta clean, clean, clean your space. This is how you keep, keep germs away. Yeah, you gotta go wild, wild, wash your hands. Everybody does their part Now you know just what to do Show the world that they need to Wash, wash, wash your hands When you gotta cough, cough, turn your head Yeah, you gotta clean, clean, clean your space This is how you keep, keep germs away for the sniffles. <laughs> Woohoo! So make sure to wash your hands when there's the coronavirus and even when there's allergies and colds and flus. We don't want to get anybody sick and we don't want to get sick either. So we are going to get started by starting off with some singing and dancing and getting a little bit crazy and worshiping for Jesus. Woohoo! I'm captivated, I say it, I'm on a whole new tree. My space invaded, upgraded, I hear you talking to me. It's in the boom of the thunder, it's in the cool of the rain. And I'll say, I don't ever want to get away. Tonight is beautiful, it's got my mind on you. And everywhere I turn is a reminder
everywhere I turn is a reminder From the sparkle in her eyes To the starlit open skies You bring my heart to life Fill me with wonder of breath. I don't know about you guys, but now I think we might need to get some sips of water. So if you need some water, go get a sip of water and take a deep breath. And we have a very special science experiment for you. All right. So kids, we have a special science experiment where we're gonna talk about worry and trust. So, um, we have some supplies with us that you can find in your very own home, in your kitchen, like cooking oil and water with some food coloring, just a glass. And that's all you need. So if you guys want to do this again later on, we definitely encourage you to get those out of your kitchen and try it for yourself. Right now, we're going to demonstrate what we're going to learn about, about trusting and worrying. So to start off, we are going to demonstrate with this oil that Veli is showing to us that our worry represents 
sorry, our oil represents worry. And when we, let's see, what, when we think about worry, what do you guys think it means to worry? Why don't you go ahead and type it in the chat in YouTube Live and share with us what you think worry means. When I think about worry, I think about being concerned and worrying about what's gonna happen. What's gonna happen later today? What's gonna happen with this science experiment? What are we gonna learn about? And I also think about being afraid. It's kind of scary. Sometimes you don't know what's gonna happen, like with the coronavirus. What if I get sick? What if my family gets sick? What's gonna happen? What are we gonna do? We don't have school. Does anybody else have anything they wanna share? Well, Charisma says, worry is not trusting. Worry is not trusting. Great job, Charisma. You are so right. Worry is not trusting God. And I think you might have taken a little sneak peek at our lesson, because that's what we're going to talk about. You're so smart. So putting the oil aside, we also brought with us some water. Trinity's showing this water. What we did is we just put a little bit of green food coloring in it so you could see it nice and clear. It might be a little bit hard to see on the camera, but when you do it at home, you'll see it nice and clear. So the water is going to represent trust, trusting God. So what does it mean to trust God? Does anybody want to take a stab at it and write in the chat what they think it means to trust God? Well, I think of trusting God. I think about remembering that God is in control. He knows everything, just like we sang about earlier. God knows everything, and he's in control of everything. And we don't have to be afraid, because God is taking care of us, and he loves us. Does God want us to worry, or does he want us to trust in him? We can trust in God, right? He doesn't want us to worry. Yeah. And do you think that we can trust God and worry at the same time? Well, let's find out. Let's let our science experiment show us. So we are going to take our oil that represents worry, and we are going to take our water that represents trust, and we're going to pour them in this glass jar. Okay, so we have our oil, we have our worry, and we have our trust. And I don't know how easy it is to see on the camera, but I can see up close that they're separating. You can see a layer of green, but you can't see the, um, the colors mixing. They've separated. So now that we've done our science experiment, Let's take a stab at that question again. Do you guys think that we can trust and worry at the same time? No, they don't mix. Our hearts cannot fully trust God 
and worry at the same time. They can't mix. God wants us to trust him whenever we're tempted to worry because he cares about us and he is in control and he knows about everything that will happen in the past. He knows about everything that's happening right now in the present and he knows everything that's gonna happen in the future. God is worthy of our full trust. Oh, right. So we have a very special skit for you, and we have a very special visitor as well. Well, kids, wasn't that a cool science experiment about why we don't have to worry? Because we can fully trust in God, right? Amen. Oh, look who it is. It's our friend Romper. Kids, can you all say hi to Romper on the count of three? Ready? One two, three. Hi, Hi romper. romper. Oh, Romper, you look a little upset. Is there something on your mind? Oh, well, it, it is sure good to see all of you guys. Kids, you look so comfy and cozy in your homes with your family. You see, although I'm really excited to see you guys, I'm worried because I'm moving to a new house this week. Romper, you live in a house? I can see why you're worried. There would be no water for you to swim in. <laughs> well, actually a new pond. There's no more fish in our pond, and you know how we otters love our fish. Oh yeah, I can see how leaving your pond that you've lived in your whole life would be tough. That sounds a little bit scary. Yeah, what if I don't make any new friends in our new pond? Or what if I can't swim and do backflips and dives like in my old pond? Will the water be warm enough? Will there be rocks for me to sunbathe on? Wow, that's a lot of things to think about and worry about, Romper. Yeah, it's really starting to wear me down. I feel a huge weight on my little otter shoulders that I just don't like. Well, Romper? Guess what? We were just talking about why we don't have to worry because we can trust in God. Hi everyone, it's nice to see you here. Man, this backpack sure is heavy. It's really weighing me down. Trinity, what on earth are you doing with the backpack and why are you carrying it? You don't even have school today. I just kept filling it with more and more things I thought I would need. I don't even remember what I put in here. That backpack looks so big and heavy. I think it would crush me. You know what? This backpack reminds me of something. Something that you said earlier, Romper. You said you felt so worn out and weighed down by the worries and concerns. And well, Trinity, she also looks really worn out and weighed down by this backpack. You could say that again. Trinity, that backpack is going to break your back if you keep wearing it. Well, Trinity, I'd say you and Romper have something in common. Mm -hmm. How can I have something in common with the sea otter? No offense, Romper, but we look a lot different and our lives and activities are very different too. Yeah, I mean, I have fur all over my body, and I like, eat, I like to eat lots and lots of fish. Mmm, I love that fishy smell. Ew, just thinking about that makes me gag. Ugh. No, look, you both have things that are weighing you down. Romper, you have all your worries, and Trinity, you have your heavy backpack. Both of these items are way too heavy for you two to carry. Are you saying that I should be carrying Trinity's backpack? No, you're pretty strong, Mariah, but that backpack is not yours to carry either. Phew. Kids, we all carry worries around every day, and they're not ours to carry, just like this backpack Trinity's carrying. Kids, do you have any worries that are weighing on you right now? Please feel free to put them in the chat.
Well, I can tell you I have a lot of worries that I can struggle with from time to time. I worry about if something's going to happen to my family, or I worry about my job. I worry about my future. Yeah, I worry too. I worry about what if we don't have enough toilet paper? But Jesus tells us to not worry. So let's read the Bible and see what he has to say about it. Turn to Matthew 6, 25 through 27. It says, that is why I tell you, do not worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They do not plant or harvest or store food in barns, but your heavenly father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all the worries add a single moment to your life? That's right. Thank you, Jesus. So you're saying that Jesus doesn't want us to worry? Exactly. Jesus can carry all of our worries. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> when we worry, we aren't trusting God. We are depending on somebody or something besides God. Kids, do you remember our science experiment earlier? Can anybody tell me what we learned about from our science experiment? Worry doesn't mix with trusting God, right? We need to fully trust God in all circumstances. But what about my pond? Don't worry, Romper. Trust God. First Peter 5, 7 says, Give all your cares and worries to God because he cares about you. Wow. God cares about me? And he cares about what I care about? He sure does. Yes, and you know what else? When we worry, we're actually being prideful. We are trusting to handle hard things ourselves rather than giving them all to God and trusting in Him. We need to first admit that we cannot carry it at all, and then we need to ask for help. Yeah, like that backpack. It was so heavy. I just couldn't carry it anymore. I feel so free not having that weight anymore. It, yes. Exactly. And I think some kids, you have something to share too, right? Charisma says that you can't worry and trust at the same time. Amen. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Charisma. You are exactly right. You can't worry and trust at the same time. And we need help from Jesus, right? Amen. And what's even better? God wants to help us. And when we worry and when we are fearful and anxious, those things can really devour us and eat us up because they are not from God. Oh, what? Fears and worries can eat us up like a big, giant, hungry shark? Sounds scary. Well, it doesn't mean we will actually get eaten, but it does mean that it will hurt us and it will prevent us from being who God has called us to be. God has called us to be strong and mighty and courageous for him. Yeah, I don't want to be a baby otter. I want to be strong and a courageous, mighty otter, one who God wants me to be. Amen, Romper. And we can be strong and courageous when we put our trust in God. Amen. We should all want to be who God wants us to be because he has a great calling on each of our lives because he loves us so much, so much that he stretched out his arms on the cross and he said this much and then he died on the cross for our sins so that we could spend eternity with him. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you guys for sharing that with me and for teaching me not to worry. 
I am going to trust in God that he'll provide a great new pond for me, even if it's a little different from my old pond. I trust that he is in control and that he loves me and wants the best for me. Amen. And when you start to feel just a little worry creep in, pray to Jesus. Confess your fear to God and let him handle your worries and cares. He is the only one who is big enough to handle all your worries and all your cares. Wow, he must have some mighty big hands. He does, and a mighty big heart for each and every one of you. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that we can give all of our worries and all of our cares to you, and that you will take care of us. Thank you for loving me so much. Thank you that you are bigger than all of my cares and all of my worries. I pray that you would help me to not worry, but to trust in you. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen, Trinity. Thank you so much. All right, so we are going to do a craft tonight. And before we start our craft, I'm going to share with you guys, thanks, Ray. I'm going to share with you guys something that I like to do when I'm tempted to feel a little worried or anxious or scared. So I'll share a story with you guys. Just recently, I was going to the dentist and I had to get a big surgery and I was really scared. And so God told me to not worry and instead pick up his word and read it and then pray. So what I like to do now is read Psalm 23. So if you guys have your Bible, I'd really like you to turn there with me. A way to find Psalm, it's a little trick I found when I was little, is you take your Bible and you go to kind of the middle of it and then you open it up. Sometimes it doesn't always work, but you can know that Psalm is right at, Psalms is right after Job and right before Proverbs. So we're going to turn to Psalm 23 and it says, the Lord is is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Wow, that's so amazing. God can comfort us in in the dark places that we're in, the dark valleys, when we're going through dark, scary times, he can comfort us and give us peace. He doesn't want us to worry. He wants us to trust in him, right guys? Yes, all right. So just like we learned about earlier, how God takes care of even the little birds of the air, Just like a shepherd takes care of his his sheep, Jesus also takes care of us. So we're going to do a little craft to remind us um, that we are kind of like the sheep and Jesus is our shepherd and he takes care of us. So what you're going to need for this craft is a paper plate. Any paper plate will do probably. (laughs) As long as it's big enough to fit your face. (laughs) That was hard for me to find one big enough. Just kidding. Okay. (laughs) Then you're also going to need some paper. I have cardstock paper just because it's a little less flimsy than regular paper. But I think regular paper will work just fine too. Then I have some scissors, a coloring pencil, a pink coloring pencil. You can do a marker as well or any coloring utensil you have. And then I just have a regular old pencil. Then you're going to need some glue, maybe some tape too. And then you're going to need some cotton balls. I just got mine from the dollar store. All right. So what you're going to do is take your paper plate and make sure that you have a parent with you because we're going to be using scissors and we don't want you guys to get cut or hurt or anything. All right. But I can do it by myself because I'm 21. But 
before when I was your age, I needed to go get my mom or dad or a guardian. Anyone will work as long as they're an adult, okay? Then you're going to take your plate. You're going to gently stab a hole in the middle of the plate. Sounds a little scary, but just try to be gentle with it, okay? All right, I got my hole in the plate like this, okay? So then you're going to take your scissors and starting from that hole that you just made, you're going to cut all the way until about this point on your plate. What you're trying to do is just cut out the center part of your paper plate. So that's what I'm going to do. I just go like, watch. I'll just go like this all around the plate. Whoop, 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 just like this. It's kind of fun. OK? After you do that, it'll look something like this. See? Big enough to fit my face. All right. So then you can set that aside. Now we're going to make our little lammy ears. OK, so you're going to take your paper that I talked about earlier. You're going to fold it in half. I think this is hamburger style. Or maybe, yeah, this is hamburger style, if you've ever learned that. There's either hamburger or hot dog. We're going to do hamburger style today. OK, and then you're going to take your pencil, and you're going to draw this shape. So I'm going to draw it down here, and then I'll show you what it looks like. OK, one second. Actually, more than a couple seconds. OK, so it's kind of hard to see, but I'll describe it for you a little bit. <laughs> going to zoom so you can see it. OK, so see that kind of shape? It's kind of like a teardrop, teardrop shape. But at the top, you leave it a little bit open. So that's the shape we're going to make for our little lamb ears. OK, do you see that? OK, so after that, you're just going to cut that shape out. And since your page, your paper is folded, you're going to get two ears out of this. So you don't have to do it twice. So you're just going to. Cut your shape out. Make sure you're careful with this. All right. Then look. Oh, we got two ears. It's amazing. I look like a little lamb already. OK, whoa. Whoopsies. OK, here we go. So now we're going to work on attaching our ears to our paper plate. OK, I'm going to probably use tape for this. But if you have enough time to let everything dry, you can probably just use glue. But since we're trying to do this a little quickly, I'm going to use tape. But actually, I just remembered something. This is optional. But if you want to, you can color a little pink, a little pink part on each ear. Because sometimes little baby lambs have little pink inside to their ears. So I'm going to do that because I think it looks really cute. But you can do whatever you want for your little lammy. OK, I colored the little pink centers, if you can see that. Looks really cute, doesn't it? OK, so let's take our tape and attach our ears to our paper plate. So what I'm going to do, just to give you an idea, so this is the back part of my plate. And I'm going to attach these to the back, like this. OK? You don't want to do it like this, because then you'll look like a bunny. But we want to do it to the side, because it looks more like a little lamb. So take your tape or your glue. Now you can see a little better. What? Oh, it's OK. Thank you, though. OK, so we'll just tape our first ear on. One piece of tape should do, but we'll see how it holds up in a little bit. And then we'll do our next ear over here. Make sure that they're symmetrical, if that's the right word. They're the same. All right, we got this all taped up. I'm going to show you what it looks like. See, doesn't that look cute? It's a little, it's starting to come together. 
Okay, now, oh, oh, okay. So you might wanna add some glue right here because as you see, it's a little floppy. But for the sake of time, I'm just gonna leave it like this. Okay, so next, you're gonna add the cotton balls, which is a really fun part in my opinion. So you're gonna take your cotton balls, you can just pour a bunch out on your table if that's okay, because we might need a lot. Whoa, that's fun. Fluffy. Okay, make sure you touch some first, because it's just so fun. Okay, so we're gonna take our glue. I just have some regular old liquid glue, washable glue. And I'm gonna start with just a section, and I'm just gonna go section by section, okay? I'm gonna start with the, I'm gonna start with the outer part of the circle first. Okay, I'm gonna start with this outer part right here, and then I, I will do another layer inside, okay? So, you just put some glue, and then you just stick a couple on. I'll just probably do three. Like this, see? And then after that, you're just gonna want, I'm, for the sake of time, I'm just gonna do a couple just to show you. But see how I did three on the outside? And then you can take your glue, and on the inner layer, put some more glue here. And I'm gonna add three more. Look at that. Isn't that cute? So you're gonna wanna do that all the way around. It might take a little bit of time, but it's pretty fun. Um, but you're gonna do your outer layer and then you can work on your inner layer. And I actually have a finished one that I can show you guys. So let me set this aside. All right, so here is the finish. This is what the finished product will look like. Isn't this cute? So I'm gonna put it on my face so I can pretend to be a little lamb. <laughs> so this, we made this today so it can remind us that we are like little lambs. We, we go astray, we get scared really easily, we don't always know the right way, but we know somebody who does, and his name is Jesus, and he's the good shepherd who loves us and cares about us, and like Rachel was saying, he cares for us. So whenever we feel anxious or scared or worried, you guys can remember that Jesus is a good shepherd, and he cares for you, and he'll comfort you in those dark and scary times. Thanks for watching this craft, guys. Wasn't that so cool? I can't wait to make my little lammy face, and I can't wait to see all yours too. Once you finish making your craft, we would love if your parents could take pictures and send them to us and make sure that you're putting it on your face just like Veli did. And then you can send them to our church email, which is info at calvaryov.org. And we would love to put together a cute little collage of all of your pictures. So we're so excited to see you all, and we're so excited to see your pictures, and we have one more song that we want to do. For those of you who know the Ten Commandment Boogie, we're going to dance and get a little crazy, so make sure that you have lots of room that you can dance in your living room and sing your heart out, because even though we're not close to you, I bet if you sing really loud, we can hear you. So sing really loud, and we want to see all your best dance moves.